What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to deploy Python applications on Google Cloud Run using Docker. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to deploy a Python application to Google Cloud Run using Docker in this video today. Now, as an example here, I'm going to use a simple to do list application written in Flask, you can use the exact same application if you want to, you can copy paste the code from my GitHub repository in Roll9, then YouTube tutorials, and then the to do list app Flask. So you just scroll down here to do list app Flask, and then you can copy paste the code. But of course, it doesn't really matter what you deploy, you can deploy a simple Hello World application or any Flask application of your choice. The focus of this video today is not on what we deploy, but how we deploy it. So um, I want to show you the application quickly. So you know what it looks like when it works so that we can see that actually when it's deployed, it is what we're running locally here, a simple to do list application, I can just type some stuff in here. Uh, then I can delete individual entries, I can edit them. I can check them. And that's basically it. So that is a very simple to do list application. This is what we want to deploy. And the goal is to have it then running in the Google Cloud. So what we're going to do first here is we're going to adjust the application, whatever it is to run on port 8080. This is what Google is expecting. It's expecting us to run or it's expecting our application to listen on port 8080. This is just a convention. If this doesn't work, your application is not going to work. Uh, so that's the first uh, requisite here or prerequisite here. The second thing is we need to have everything set up for a Docker deployment. So what we need is we need a Docker file and we need a requirements txt file. Now in this case here, my application just has one simple requirement. So I'm going to create here a requirements txt file. In this case, I just need flask. Now you can also specify a specific version if you want to. But I'm just going to go with flask if you're using pandas and numpy and so on in your application, uh, or any other Python package that's not core Python, you can specify it here or you have to specify it here. And then what we want to do is we want to create a Docker file, this Docker file explains how the image is going to be created. So we're going to create a capital D Docker file here. And in this Docker file, we specify uh, the Python version. So I'm going to say here from Python, uh, colon 3.10 dash slim dash buster. This is the one that I'm going to use here, you can also use a different one. And then we're going to define the working directory to be I don't know, to do app, or something like this. So slash to do app. And then we're going to copy our requirements txt file to a requirements txt file in the Docker container. And we're going to say that we want to run the following command pip three install dash r requirements txt. And then we want to copy all of the files to the working directory. And in the end, we want to run the following command Python three, or actually, we should probably use double quotations Python three, and then app.py in this case. And of course, this depends on what application you're running. But in this case, I have an app py file. Um, and here I'm running the app at port 8080. And I'm hosting it on 0000. So you don't want to host it on localhost, you want to host it on the private IP address. If you don't know it just 0000. There you go. Okay, so what we can do now is of course, we can build the Docker image locally and just upload it or just push it or we can use Google Cloud build to build it already in the cloud using our Docker file. So we're going to set up all of this here in the cloud for this, you want to go to the Google Cloud console, you will find a link in the description down below, you have to have a Google account. And what you're going to do here in this console is you're going to go uh, here in the upper left uh, corner, and you're going to create a new project. And this new project here, I'm going to call now to do app deploy, because I already have to do app deployment because I played around for this video, uh, we're going to create this. And in here, we're going to then enable two uh, APIs. The first one is the Google Cloud Run API, which I think we don't actually need to enable, because it's already enabled by default. But you can just check you just go to Cloud Run here. And uh, if you see something like this, it's already enabled. And then we're going to go also to Cloud Build which is going to allow us to build the Docker container in the cloud. 
Uh, now you need to make sure that you have the correct project selected. So to do app deploy in this case, um, and you're going to see that the cloud build API is not enabled. So I'm going to click on enable here. And the same has to be done for cloud run if it's not enabled. Um, all right, so that's the first step. The second step is you want to install the Google Cloud uh, CLI. So the command line interface, the terminal tool, the shell that we're going to use to execute all of the commands. Now, basically, everything I do here in the terminal today can also be done in the graphical user interface. Uh, it might even be more convenient. So if you want to use the graphical user interface, go ahead and do so. I just like to use the command line more. Uh, so in order to install the Google Cloud uh, CLI, you can either follow the instructions on their documentation side here. So you can Google install the G Cloud CLI and you can pick your operating system and then follow the instructions. Uh, I pick the easy route and I just use snap to install the Google Cloud uh, console. So or CLI. So I did snap install and then Google Cloud CLI like this. Um, now I'm not going to run this again. But this is what I did. And then you can use G cloud on your system. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to run uh, run G cloud init. this is going to allow you to initialize everything. I did this already. So you can also then run G cloud off login to log into your Google account, it's going to open up a tab in your browser where you can log into your Google account. In my case, I already did this as well. And then what you need to do is you need to say G cloud config set and then project and what you need to enter here is you need to enter uh, the exact ID of your project. So you can see if the name is exotic and doesn't exist yet. So something like to do app deploy doesn't exist um, outside of my projects here. So I have the ID to do app deploy. If you use something more generic like test project or test proj, uh, you can see that it attaches a, a number onto it. So in this case, I just have to use to do app deploy. If you have a number, just make sure you don't pick the name of uh, on the left side, but the name on the right side, if it's the same, it doesn't matter. But if it's not the same, you want to pick the ID here. So we're going to say G cloud config set project and in my case to do app deploy. Um, yeah, that's basically it. This is going to select a project. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a repository for our artifact. Now we can do that here in the graphical user interface as well. So we just have to look for, let me go to the Google Cloud, we just have to look for the artifact registry. Uh, and here you can do everything with point and click as well. Uh, the instructions are basically the same, you click on create repository and do everything here with point and click, I'm going to do it in the command line just because I like to have this, uh, yeah, this interface and the control of all the parameters here using text. So what we're going to do is we're going to say G Cloud. Let me just zoom in a little bit here. G cloud, and then we're going to say artifacts, repositories, and then create, and the name is going to be I don't know to do repo or something, whatever you want to call it. Now, then we're going to say dash dash repository, repository dash format is going to be equal to Docker. And then we're going to say dash dash location is equal to and now here is the step where probably using the UI is easier because when you use the UI, you can just pick it here uh, from the list. Otherwise, you have to know the identifiers, I usually go with something like Europe West Four. Um, so either you pick it here in the UI or you specify Europe dash West Four. Uh, and then we're going to say dash dash description is equal to I don't know, to do repo. And then we're going to say dash dash immutable tags and dash dash async. So this now submitted a request after a while shouldn't take too long, we should see a repository here called to do repo and to this repository, then we can upload the Docker image as an artifact, which we can then use in a service. So you probably want to have Docker installed locally here. So you want to install Docker desktop um, on your system. Uh, I would recommend you just follow the instructions from the Docker page. So you just go to docker.com and you go to download for your operating system. And then you follow the instructions to get Docker desktop on your system. I don't want to do this now here in the tutorial. Uh, but then what you want to do is you want to run the following command G cloud auth configure Docker, and then you specify your location, for example, Europe West, 
uh, for dash docker dot pkg dot def. This is going to add something to your configuration, which is going to um, to be required here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a permission to our service account uh, so that it can access the uh, the storage. Now I'm not sure if that is necessarily or actually we don't have one here. So let's see if it works without this. Otherwise, we're going to have to adjust something. Uh, but what you want to do now is you want to navigate to your directory where you have the Docker file. So in my case, this is going to be documents, programming, neural nine, Python, current, and here we want to go to the to do list at flask. So you want to go to the directory where your Docker file is located and you want to run gcloud and then builds, plural, submit. So gcloud builds submit dash dash tag and you want to specify here now the following now this has to be exactly the same you have to specify first your location in my case europe dash west four in your case whatever your location is dash docker dot pkg dot def slash your project id which we used before remember this is the thing on the right side here so to do ab deploy slash now you want to go with your repo name, in my case, to do repo slash and now you can choose a name for the image, let's say to do image, colon, and now you can choose a tag, let's say to do tag. So I can run this now. And this is hopefully going to work in terms of permission and everything. If it works, you should see whatever you see when you're building. Uh, it says it's not enabled. So let's enable this. Okay, now it says that the computer account doesn't have the permission. So probably now we're going to have to set the permissions. Let's just leave this until it crashes. There you go. So now let's go to IAM here in the GUI. Let's refresh this. Probably there should be an account here now. There you go. Let's go to edit here and let's add a role, which is going to be the role of the storage uh, storage object viewer. So this one here, save this. And now let's rerun the command from before. This time, hopefully it should work. And there you go. It starts building it runs everything that is being run when you create the image, you can see it runs the copying the requirements install installing flask, then it's pushing everything. Now the image is going to be pushed into the repository. And in the repository, then we're going to see an image, this image will then be used by a service that we're going to submit to cloud run. Um, so that is actually then the final step once this is pushed. So we should be able to see here, uh, when we go to artifacts, we should be able to see our repository. And in this repository, there should be an image. And this image can then be used in Google Cloud Run. So as you can see here, we have the to do image. So now we're going to go to Cloud Run. And this is actually let's do this in the in the UI here. And we're going to say create service, we're going to say we want to use uh, from an existing one deploy from an existing container image. And here now I'm going to click on select. And I'm going to select your artifact registry, which is selected by default, then I'm going to go here to Europe West to do app deploy to do repo, I'm going to go to this image here, and I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to pick this tag. So this is what I want to use here, I'm going to select it, I'm going to provide a service name, I'm going to go for the same re region as before. Uh, I'm going to allow unauthenticated invocation. So we don't need authentication. And the rest is basically the default, then I'm going to click create. And this should then deploy the application successfully. Again, it's important that your application listens on port 8080. If you have this set up, this should uh, work immediately, it shouldn't take too long for this to actually be online. And once it's online, you're going to see the URL displayed here where it says loading, then you can just visit it. And it's a public application. So whatever you ran locally, if you did everything properly should now run uh, publicly and can be visited by everyone who has the URL since you also enabled the unauthenticated access.
All right, so after some time it worked, you can see now we have this URL here and I have my to do list application running. Now I'm going to take this offline after recording the video, obviously, but um, if you were to go to this URL right now at home, while I'm recording, you would see this application, you would be able to use it. So I can just go ahead and do stuff here, I can delete and edit and all this everything that the application was able to do locally, I can now do remotely in the cloud. So this is how you deploy a Python application as a Docker container to the cloud. Now, one thing that you can also do is you can build as I mentioned, the Docker container locally. So for this, you want to start Docker desktop. Uh, so you want to run an instance of Docker locally. Uh, I'm going to close the application here. And then you can build the container locally or build the image locally. And then you can push it to the server uh, using Docker. So for this, we're going to say here, Docker built uh, and then a dot for the current directory. So you want to run this as well in this directory here. Uh, you want to specify the tag Europe West for Docker PKG def slash to do app deploy slash to do repo slash other image, other tag, whatever. And then you're building everything locally here. So you're running the whole process locally. And then what you want to do is you want to push this onto uh, the cloud or into the artifact registry. So we want to say Docker push and then again, Europe West for Docker PKG def slash to do repo slash um, or actually, sorry, it was to do app deploy slash to do repo slash other image, other tag. And that should then have the same effect. So this should probably let me just see, should probably be able to now let's see artifact registry. There you go, we have the other image and then you could follow the same uh, the same process cloud run create service. And instead of selecting this image, you select this image. So this is the other way you could do that. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.